We're going to add up the areas of a bunch of rectangles whose bases are delta x long and whose height are the height of each function at every i point. Uh, so this is base times height. We're going to add up the areas of all the rectangles, starting with the first rectangle and going to the nth rectangle. The more rectangles we have, the better approximation we get, so we're going to let n go to infinity. We grab all these pieces. First one I'm going to grab is delta x, which is always b minus a over n. So it's 4 minus 1 over n, so 3 over n. Then I'm going to grab the x of i, so my starting spot. It's going to not at a, but we take right-hand rectangles, so it's a plus i delta x's. And then, so my a is 1, i is i, delta x, we figured that was 3 over n. Now I'm going to find f of x of i by plugging in my x of i to my function. So I need x of i squared minus 2 times x of i plus 5. Cleaning this up, this thing gets foiled, so when you foil this you get 1 plus 6i over n plus 9i squared over n squared, don't forget that middle term when you foil. Distribute this, minus 2 minus 6i over n plus that 5. Now, cleaning this up, 1 minus 2 plus 5 is 4. The 6i over n and the minus 6i over n cancel out, which is very nice, plus 9i squared over n squared. So now we have that, and we're ready to plug it into this. So this is going to be, limit as n goes to infinity, sigma i equals 1 to n, delta x we said was 3 over n, and f of x of i we said was 4 plus 9i squared over n squared. First phase done, setup done. Now we got to deal with these um, sigmas. So I'm going to write this, I'm going to sort of just manipulate it, I'm going to pull the 3 over n out to the front because it's constant with respect to the sigma. The only thing that's changing is the i, so I can, it's legal. Then I'm going to break the sigma up into, because it's, we have nice properties, we can do what we think we can do, 4 plus, pull out the 9 over n squared, because the only thing that's changing with respect to the sigma is the i squared, so any constant can be pulled out. So we're just sort of manipulating it to look like that. And then there are formulas to evaluate these sigmas. This first one makes sense. If we have the sum of a constant, it's just going to be 4, that n times that constant. Uh, if you're adding up n fours, you have 4n. Uh, this one here, the sum of i squared, is not as intuitive. It's n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 all over 6. Just something you may want to memorize. So now we have that set up, and the sigmas are gone. Hooray! Next phase, dealing with that limit. So if we write it this way, this n will always cancel out with the end here. It cancels out with that end and cancels out with that end. And that's going to help us evaluate. So now again, if I sort of manipulate this, leaving the 3 out there, leaving the 4 there, let's cancel out this, take out a 3, to make that a 2, take out a 3 from the 9 to make that a 3. So this is 3 halves. And then what we're left with here on the top, if you foil it out, that's 2n squared plus 3n plus 1, and the bottom is n squared. So now this is all ready to go for our limit. That's a 3, that's a 4, that's a 3 halves. Now, if the powers match, as they usually will, if you've done everything right, um, you can take the coefficients for that limit. So that's 2 over 1. For that. You could also do L'Hopital's rule if you want, but polynomials over polynomials, powers matching, take those coefficients. So now we are, oh, I did the limit. So now we just have to figure out what this is. So that's 3 times 4 plus 3. That's 3 times 7, which is 21. Whoa, we got an answer. Woo! -hoo. 
Uh, but that was a very long way of getting the answer with the definition, so let's check ourselves using the normal shortcut. So what I'm going to do is, if I just do my normal antiderivative method, taking the antiderivative x cubed over 3 minus x squared plus 5x, evaluating from 1 to 4, when I plug in the 4, I get 64 thirds, uh, minus 16 plus 20, and when I plug in the 1, I get 1 third minus 1 plus 5. So 64 thirds minus 1 third is 63 thirds, minus 16 plus 20 is 4, and then I have minus, and minus 1 plus 5 is 4. So 4 minus 4 goes away, 63 over 3 is indeed 21, which, oh my gosh, miracle of miracles, matches. Ridiculous, right?